Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his Monday guest, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How you doing? Doing great, Michael. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. So uh, last Monday, uh, I, I sh we should have talked about this last week, but I honestly forgot I had such great topics. But I just released a new book called 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires. And what I wanted you to know is you actually are chap your our first conversation, the truck in the toolbox is chapter nine. So uh, thank you very much for being a part of the book. Awesome, man. That's that's fantastic. Thank you. I didn't I didn't even know. I had no idea. Yeah. So what, what happened here, folks, is I went I spent uh, God, this is now a year in the making. About 11 months ago, I, I tried to figure out I looked at all my interviews and I created a storyboard of 15 unique conversations. And the reason the truck in the toolbox is in there is because you are, by definition, the entrepreneur, right? We've talked about many times how you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and saw it completely different than me. Uh, you know, we've had other conversations about the American dreams, not dead. So, yeah, that conversation is the uh, the meat of chapter nine. And um, I just um, I guess I'll talk about it a little bit here. Uh, let's actually it's that's awesome, man. I hope does that mean I peaked? <laughs> no, no, no. Is it's just, it? the, it's, it's the next level, man. It's the next level. That's you're just at, the beginning. Okay. You're at the bit. You're at a base camp. Enjoy it. So all of my investors have, you know, there's, everybody has the thing, but uh, I summarized our conversation. There's one a thing called advice. Every, every chapter has advice. And what I said for you is the American dream is alive and well, go get yours. Would you say that's absolutely. fair? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, how do I want to kind of highlight? I just, it was such a great conversation. Yeah. I mean, that that's me in a nutshell. So, you know, the, my message to everybody and, and what I do every day is, you know, you can do whatever it is you want to do within yeah. reason, you know, yeah. everybody has their limits, right? I mean, I'm not going to go play quarterback for, you know, New England, which they, you know, could yeah. not handle Brady last night, but no, yeah, it, was close. it was close. Yeah, yeah. It was fun to watch, but um, yeah, I mean, we all have our limits, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, yeah. all those types of things. So within your limits physically, you know, there's nothing you can't do if you apply yourself, educate yourself. You know, if you're not happy where you are in your life, or even if you are, you know, you can't always make a change. You can always change your position. You know, you can't really see me fully, but there was a time in my life back in 2004 when I was 80 pounds overweight. I was, you know, I smoked a pack of cigarettes a day my entire life. I grew up wow. smoking. That was just the family that I grew up in. Everybody smoked you know, and um, in the military, a lot of people smoke. So that's just kind of, you know, 2004, I decided that's it. I'm done. I quit smoking and lost weight at the same time. Wow. It usually goes the other way around. Yeah, I was going to say, that's not the usual way. You either, you quit smoking and gain weight because you replace it with popsicles or candy well, or and something. I knew that and I was already overweight and, and I had a neighbor and he was huge. I mean, he was, you know, five, 600 pounds and, you know, very unhealthy. And, and, you know, I, I normally have a 32, 33 inch waist. That's what I carry. And, um, you know, I'm six, 170 pounds. So I'm, I'm long and lanky. I'm lean, but I had gotten to the point I can carry a lot of weight and make it look good, you know, mm. or, or it looks okay. I don't look huge. And I'd gotten up to, you know, 240 pounds, and I was busting out of 38s, getting ready to go into 40s. Mm. And I remember looking at my neighbor next door and I wanted to quit smoking. And I was like, man, if I don't do something, I'm, that's my next step. That's where I'm headed. And if I quit smoking, I don't want to put on a bunch of weight. So I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to quit and lose weight at the same time. Wow. I just, boom, put my mind to it and focused. And just like every other business that I did going back to, you know, the first thing as a kid, when I learned, Hey, if I want to get, if I want money, if I want something, I need money. And if I want money, go do something to earn it, figure yeah. out a way, yeah. you know, what do I need? What can I do? How can I not? I can't, I don't have, I don't know, you know, find out the answer, you know, resourcefulness is the number one thing that a lot of people miss. You have to be resourceful. Don't just ask somebody, you know, mm -hmm. like I'll, I'll get people that reach out on my Instagram or whatever, you know, what's your website or how can I dude, it's right up in the top where my, you know, yeah. where my name, you know what I mean? It's like people just, they just don't want to put the effort in and be resourceful. Yeah. So the key is you got to be relentlessly resourceful. You got to look for the answer, find an answer, find a way. There's always a way to, to, to get where you want to be and make your dreams come true. Whatever that is, there is a way. You just got to ask the right questions differently. How yeah. can I, where can I, what do I need? You know, not, I can't, I don't, I, you know, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I guess I'll summarize a couple of things uh, about chapter nine. So I uh, kind of right out of the gate, I, I, uh, I list a bunch of lessons that I believe are priceless. 
uh, and for your chapter, one is no co uh, college education is not required. Uh, work hard, network, be open to learning. Big company is not required. Peace of mind and time flexibility. Finding or creating value. Uh, commercial, uh, commercial value creation, not much different than residential. Those are kind of the early takeaways I had from our conversation. Any of those hit you particularly hard? Well, you know, what I'll speak to for everybody is, you know, for people that don't know my story, you know, I didn't go to college. I didn't have, you know, a huge pedigree, this big corporate background. Nobody in my family were entrepreneurs. They weren't uberly successful. My dad was career military. My mom was a career, uh, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield employee. Um, and, you know, so you don't need those things. And it's really interesting. Um, I just purchased a book the other day that actually studies this. So it's oh. a book called View from the Top um, by Harvey Lindsay, okay. PhD. And this book is all about, um, you know, exactly what you, you know, what you don't need. And it's studied, you know, hundreds of CEOs and top earners all okay. over the world doing all kinds of different things. And what it boiled down to is it didn't matter what school they went to. It didn't matter what their upbringing was. And, you know, all of those things you listed, mm -hmm. none of it made a difference. It was yeah. the individual, um, you know, and their habits and their discipline and, you know, pouring into themselves and making the most of the situations they came from and things like that. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still taken aback by you quit smoking and lost weight at the same time. Cause that, that is an example of mental discipline that most people simply don't have. It's a matter of making up your mind what it is you really want. That's yeah. the biggest thing that people are afraid to do. You know, once you decide what it is you want and you really want it, you'll make it happen. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. You know, it's a matter of how bad do you want it? Like people, people all say all the time, I want to be rich. Well, do you really? Yeah. I mean, do you really? Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay. Well, then are you willing to do whatever it takes morally, legally, ethically yeah. to put yourself in a position to become wealthy? Meaning yeah. you have to sacrifice, you know, all yeah. of everything else you're doing right now and totally immerse yourself, dedicate yourself to whatever it is that you, you know, want to do or mm -hmm. need to do in order yeah. to get there. We talked about Grant Cardone the other day and funny, he put out a video today um, about, you know, advice for 50 year olds. Remember our last yeah. video? It's like, did he watch our video? Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't, he maybe. probably did. <laughs> and he told the story a little bit and he talked yeah. about, you know, his last 12 to 14 years, he's built, you know, his real estate, you know, holdings. He said, but it all started with immersing myself yes. and educating myself, getting the information. About he may have watched it. Yeah. So many people want the answer today. Like I said, people will reach out to me and I'll say, Hey, it's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. What's your website address? Oh. Like, Dude, it's everything. All of my social media, it all has it there. Go yeah. look, Yeah. go yeah. find the answer. I get you that know, a lot. You think too. Grant Cardone asked somebody, you know, how do you how do you do real estate? No, he went and learned. You know. Yeah, he spent years. Uh, right. Yeah, it's it's amazing. The other thing that back to your point about do you really want to get wealthy? Are you willing to do the work? All of that. There's something I'm working on right now with a couple of other export experts, um, and basically, frankly, we are trying to rebrand house hacking. House hacking, I think, has a, 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 a for some people almost a negative connotation. Oh, house hacking. Ooh, I can't do that. So I'm trying to turn it into something that I call the cheat code to wealth. So let me walk, walk you through it because I think it points to how bad do you really want it? So the cheat code to wealth challenges a 40-year-old to list and sell their home, the one that they live in, right? So if you do that, you live there for two or five years, you can take uh, up to 250K single or 500K married tax-free, right? Most people are going to walk away from that transaction with a lot of cash. They're going to be more liquid than they've ever been before. And then what I want to know is what their mortgage payment is. Step two of this exercise is go buy a fourplex in your desired neighborhood. Put 5% down because you can get a 95% loan these days on fourplex residential, i.e. you keep a lot of cash. And then what I want you to do is I want you to rent the other three units out. And then I want to calculate, are you being paid to live there? How much is your housing cost fallen? And the reason I've done this, and I've already had five or six people in my group answer it. Two things happen. One is they've gotten between seventy-five and one hundred twenty thousand dollars cash left after buying the fourplex, which they can use to buy more cash flow real estate. And two, they have lowered their monthly nut for housing, which is the biggest expense for most people, between eighteen hundred and twenty-nine hundred dollars. Folks, that allows you to save, call it twenty-five hundred bucks a month. That's thirty grand a year 
which you can again use as the income snowball to keep going. So how bad do you want it? You are you willing to sell your home, live in a fourplex for a couple of years, go four three two one on the house hacking uh, road? I mean, do, how bad do you want it? Back to your question: How bad do you want it? Well, you know, and that that's one way. But yeah, it's one way. Can't, what if you can't move? What if you need your house? You have kids. You need a yard. All that. So then, what do you do? Well, you could take the equity out of your house, tax free. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right now it's a great time. You know, values are higher than they've ever been. Interest rates are lower than they've ever been. So keep your house, mm -hmm. refinance, pull the equity out, and then go use that to invest instead of buying the boat, putting an yeah. addition, getting a new kitchen. That's yeah. what people do. They refinance and they blow it on retail oh, I know. stuff that doesn't produce. So refinance yeah. your house, use that to go buy income producing property. You can buy a fourplex or rent the whole thing out. Yeah, that's true. Don't pay for the house you live in now or learn how to do real estate. Don't leverage your house. Pay your house off if you want to, and you don't want to have leverage and all that. Learn how to raise money to go buy real estate deals, commercial, yeah. residential, fourplex, eightplex, 30 units, whatever it is. And then you don't have any of your money at stake. Then you'll have cash flow and you'll have depreciation. You'll have all those things. It'll still pay for your house. So there's a lot of different ways yeah. to do it. Or go start a business that pays for everything that you want to pay for and then invest that into real estate like I did. Yeah. I didn't know anything, didn't have anything. What I did do? I started a business. I said, hey, I have two hands. I'm willing to work hard. Yeah, Michael, I'll do whatever you need, man. You you want a door lock replaced? You want yeah. me to paint your window, sill? You you a hundred bucks? I don't care. I would do anything. Yeah. Because why? I wanted it, and yeah. I knew what I wanted, and I knew how to get there by doing things that other people didn't want to do. That uh, added value and created opportunity for the community around me, mm -hmm. and I filled that gap, uh, and then built a company off of that doing nothing but little jobs, man. Yeah. I mean, for the first three or four or five years of my company, I mean, you know, I don't think we did anything more than probably five grand was our largest job. That's amazing. Yeah. So folks, if you want to hear about it, chapter nine, this awesome new book, 15 Conversation with Real Estate Millionaires. Again, I want to thank you for being a part of it. That conversation, um, that, that, that our first conversation changed my life. And that's why I'm so happy you agreed to be a weekly guest. So Greg, how can people find you and be part of your world? gregdickerson.com. That's where my website is. Everybody tunes in, including Grant Cardone. And go yeah, apparently. Because <laughs> he repeats what we said. He did. Yeah. I'm going to go watch that. That's, that's awesome. So, hey, Grant, how you doing, buddy? Let's, let's talk someday. Uh, anyways, Greg, thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. Yeah, you too.